He'll paint your noose like an old man He's got you thinking about your death and you are frightened Four, three, two, one. Hi to everyone, I'm Ada from Poison Rock and today we have the honor to have, uh, to have with us Doug Piercy from Blind Delusion. Hi Doug, first of all, how are you? I'm fine, I'm just at work. I, I work on I work on exotic cars and race cars and engineering stuff, <laughs> but yeah, I took a break at lunchtime and here we are. Yeah, um, I want to just go straight with the first question that of course is uh, about you. You were one of the guitarists of Envial Choros, and they, we can say that that were one of the first speed metal band with Raven. What what about that period? Well, that was a long time ago. That was a that was a wonderful period in San Francisco rock history. There was uh, Metallica hadn't broken in yet, and we were just experimenting and trying to listen to all the bands that we grew up with in the 70s because it was yeah. the early 80s yeah, and sure. um we were just trying everything we could that we really enjoyed listening to and i mean the ambul chorus thing was influenced by a lot of european experimental bands like angel witch and angel witch imagine. yeah i mean angel Witch is still around you know there was like a progressive band from canada called yeah. saga, saga uh, we like them we liked you know pat travers another canadian guy but um we were interested you know i mean we're all influenced by yes and pink floyd and those yeah. 70s bands you know led zeppelin and that kind yeah, of thing yeah all the art rock uh, influences yes yeah. of course we're, and van halen had just come out so there was like a lot of new attempts to be uh you know really uh expression we would put a lot of expression out with with uh you know, high-end guitar playing, yes, and, a sure. lot of, uh, and a uh, lot of technique, like, you know, mm -hmm. Gary Moore was there. Gary, yeah, Eddie sure. Was there. So the stage was set in terms yeah. of like great influences to listen and develop music from. And you were the and first to have these, these influences and brought into the stage, into the music, into the world of the music. Yeah, um, we were one of them in, yeah. in San Francisco. The, yeah, I mean, the Bay Area, yeah. Yeah, but we never really left the Bay Area too much. We didn't even go to Los Angeles. We just basically stayed in, in San Francisco. And, and that's why it became so famous, the trash Bay Area, we can say. Yeah. It's like, a, 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 I, I'm, I'm really, um, we say, close friend with uh, Daniel from Mordred. Ah, uh, Danny White, yeah. Yeah, yeah Danny, he yeah. He and I go way back. Yes, I know. Of course, he, when I he start to interview uh, Mordred, um, uh, Forbidden, uh, Forbidden, they were exorder. I basically interview all the Bay Area thrash metal, and I was speaking about that with, um, with Daniel yesterday with this interview, uh -huh. and he told me to to tell you that you are you were his first guitarist. You know, his first influences as guitarist. That's that's really cool of him. Yes, I mean, he also, plays great too. Yeah, and also, I mean, yeah, he asked me also to ask you about Stratocaster, Fender, and uh, the, the sport the cars, something like that. Porsches. Porsches, <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, you just kind of live. It's one of the things I guess we get to do in America. Yeah. You know. We get to try to do what we want to do and yeah, sure. and uh, just you have a chance to really make it happen. So after all these years, you know, I've managed to get a whole bunch of Stratocasters and a whole bunch yeah. of Porsches. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's it's uh, I when uh, I spoke with him, I, I, I found it very, you know, it's very nice because all of you know each other, even for example, with the uh, Craig, Los Cicero, it's like a David White, it's like a huge family and uh, all the time I said I'm yes. basically interviewing everyone over there so I'll, I'll move in San Francisco as well so, 
<laughs> I will know everyone. And and speaking about David White, I know I know that also you've been in Heaton. How how could you describe this experience being with a such a huge band like Heaton? With with Heaton, well. Yeah. I mean, back when we put the band together, uh, you know, the drummer Carl, the original drummer, he kept calling me up and saying, "Hey, man, we gotta, we gotta put this heathen thing together." You know, I know you came out and saw the show, and I, I went out and I saw them when they were they didn't even have a bass player, and, mm -hmm. and it was cool. It was a nice breath of fresh air. It was pretty heavy, sure. and uh, Carl said, "Well, we need, you know, let, we'd love to get you involved," and you know we can build this thing up into something so i got involved and uh yeah, nice put too. a lot of production techniques into recording yeah. and that first demo and kind of making the whole thing happen and yes. uh you know got dave white involved that was cool we wanted to get uh there was discussion about what kind of singer to get and uh there was discussion about getting a singer that was like paul bailoff but I was pretty against that. I, want, I thought it would be better to get a real singer, you know, to yeah. kind of go in the anthrax vein, sort of like Joey Bell, Belladonna, Joey Belladonna with, yeah. with heavy rhythms, or Armored Saint. Armored Saint, yeah. Uh, and so that's why we chose ultimately to get Dave, because yeah. Dave was a singer, and he's still yeah. in the band. Yes, and of course with the with Hit and Amini, you've been, um, we can say, in the first two albums, like Breaking the Silence, A Victim of Deception. In, in your opinion, this album could be like a, a huge, uh, we can say, a huge, uh, an, a very huge impact on the, on the trash metal scene of that period. And I mean, also uh, today, nowadays. Well, sure. I mean, that was we helped put the stamp of Bay Area Metal you know, I mean, those two records were important for like, you know, pointing out the direction of where the Bay Area metal sound was going. And there's a lot of really intense lead guitar playing on, on both those records. And, you know, there's a lot of great production on both of them too. Even the first one, yes. you know, I mean, it wasn't as highly polished as the second one, but then yes. that's okay. It was still cool. Yes. But I mean, today you present yourself with with Blend Illusion, we can say that is a, a band that together with uh, Ethan or Watchtower, they wrote the, the history of the trash um, with the trash technical metal. What did I mean? What, how, and why you decide to come back in in the scene? And what and come back and do and do and play with Mark and do the Blind Blind Illusion stuff? Yes, yes. Mark and I go way back. I knew Mark when we, when I was in Anvil Chorus, yeah. back in like 1981 or something. We were just little kids, but um, that's when I met him. That's when I met Dave. Yeah. As well, so I met the band. We played a show together, and, uh, and then we started playing shows together. We played more shows, and that's but amazing. we know all the guys forever i mean they've been around forever and so uh, you know mark had been trying he's been reaching out and contacting me asking you know recently if uh, i would join up with his band and i wasn't so sure and i wanted to kind of see where it was going and then there was an opportunity for mark to go out and play um, one of those festivals over in in europe you know, they have all the festivals every summer. Yes, This sure. was the Headbangers Open Air. And um, we wound up pulling together and learning a bunch of songs. And we, I helped Mark get that band, you know, really solid. And and we went over there and just started kicking massive ass. It was a lot of that's fun. That's amazing, that's amazing. In and 19, it was in 2017 when this took place. And so, it was really cool to just like i could see right away you know like mark's crazy and he's kind of an entertainer like that he's sort of like a circus performer he's, he's outrageous great. i mean when you are, you find the again with a we can say an old friend in a new in, in a new project yeah another, new, not, not a new project but in a, a project that you had before and exactly the, in, in your last work with blend illusion did you brought some new idea in the sound in the, the maybe were difference in the past oh sure mm -hmm. i mean 
my personal style is probably the biggest thing that I brought to the band. Um, I tend to like do lots of melodies and guitar layering. And yeah. I, you know, after playing with Heathen, we started getting really interested in super tight rhythm pickings and that yeah. kind of thing. And so uh, that's just been part of my style ever since I was in Heathen. And yeah. so, you know, as I went on and did my bands after Heathen, you know, it's the same kind of thing, but I really enjoy playing melodic crazy guitar solos and with yeah. lots of melodies and harmonies and so that yes. is probably yes, the most important thing that gets, that gets brought into the blind illusion stuff so that's fun and great and so, so far as i know and i mean today you you are with one of them we can say most historical drummer of the tangel and Gigalio. Sure. How is, I mean, how this meeting happen? How is involved in Blind Illusion? And how is working with him, playing with him? With Mark? Yeah. Um, Mark and is, Andy, and Andy Galeon, of course. Well, now we have Andy. It's really cool. It's, it's just getting cooler. I mean, playing with Mark and Tom um, has just been, it's been really, how should I say, it's been very joyful because there isn't any egotistical bullshit. Yes. There isn't any, I mean, Mark's been really cool about letting everyone have their own peace and let everyone have their say. And, and you know, it's, he, he understands that it's important for a musician to be happy if yeah. you get to play the parts that you write or, you know, have yeah. some say and how the parts get played. and that kind of thing. He does, he's naturally like that. And, and uh, it's really a breath of fresh air. There's a lot of musicians, you know, today and back then and still are yeah. everywhere that, they, they, you know, they say, no, you can't play anything that way. You have to do it exactly the way I tell you to do it. Yeah, and, you know, I agree. There's no with fun you. with that. It's like, you know, yes, I mean, if yes. everyone's going to pull together and work together, then you can make great records. That's, that's yeah. what happened. You think that with your last work, uh, this is like um, uh, an evolution, or you just continue at your old sound? Oh, it's definitely, I definitely believe there's an evolution going on. An evolution. When you hear the new record, then yeah. you're going to definitely hear things like that. There's some things that I personally did on the new record that I've never done. And I'm pretty happy about that because it lets me see that there's still room to improve and change and go yes of course and, and do more things rather than just the same thing again and again you know yeah i mean i can sit there i can record you know four guitar parts super tight precise rhythms i can play for both guitar players and do that well i've done that and i can put some guitar solos on them yes. that are crazy and fast and fun and then yeah. put some harmonies on top of that i've done that that's cool fun. yeah you have to have fun nothing first new. of all you have to you know, find first, of course. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's like you can put guitar harmonies here for two guitar players. Yeah, been true. there, done that too. I mean, we still are doing that, but there's, it's how you play and what you're doing. You know, like the direction you're going in. Like we're doing some things on this new record that are like Queen, and I find that that's a very special word to use because that is uh, it implicates. I mean, like if you take, for example, a song like Bohemian Rhapsody from Bohemian Queen, Rhapsody, yeah. look at what went into that song. That's kind of the direction of where we've been experimenting with, with the Blind Illusion stuff, which is crazy. Yeah. But it's fun, and I've never done that. That's, That's new. amazing. So if you, 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 you have, for example, to review your own last work, how would you review it? I mean, what would you say about that in few words? the what the ep the little ep we did yes yes last work oh yes. it's that was fun there's an experimental song on there the ice age that's pretty cool and different yeah. that's mark letting mark be mark and i helped him arrange the song and produce the whole thing into a, a tangible nice yeah. you know piece it's kind of long and crazy but it was a lot crazier before we started working on it you know yeah so sure once, once we got that going on that was that turned into something yeah. and then there's two old songs that we re-recorded then there's the new one that the, the, uh, the bonus track i saw some bonus track some uh, yeah, the uh, Led Zeppelin song. <laughs> that's amazing but for example if um i'm i'm i don't i don't know blind illusion i'm a, a new a newbie a newbie metal fan and i want okay. to know more no no i, I know blind illusion, but 
let's say for example I am and I want to know more Blind Illusion which song do you advise me? Let's stop I know. <laughs> There's several um, Just a few The first one I can think of is probably the, the one of the oldest ones it's called yeah. Death Noise that's nice. That, yeah. yeah. That one was written ridiculously long ago. It's still relevant today. It's still really yeah. fun to play. We all enjoy playing it. It's That's got great. everything in it. It's all completely crazy. There's guitar harmonies in it. There's insane just madness. Uh, the arrangement is completely crazy. It's very much like like a lot of the Blind Illusion stuff is still today. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, still very relevant. That's a good one. Um, if not, you know the race with the wizard song is pretty good too that's the first song on the on the ep that just came out that's a pretty good one that shows what we're doing yes you know. sure sure and in in your opinion how how is for you in um i mean how do you see the the nowadays trash metal scene or because in europe for example we have uh, a lot of new trash metal bands coming out and also in the united states like for example warbringer there are so new new bands came out and of course i for speaking for myself i can see there are so many you know inf influences from the the, the the teutonic trash metal the bayara trash metal but in your opinion how i mean uh, what do you think about this new trash era because it's a new trash era well, let's just let's just start by saying, you know, in the you know, today with all the technology and mm. iPhones and Samsungs and screens and PlayStation and all this other bullshit, it's really nice to be able to see that that people are still finding their way to to yeah. learn how to play instruments and still play music, you know, at all because yeah. there's a lot of, you know, tendencies to go in the direction of like rap music or you know hip hop where there isn't really any there isn't any real music musicianship involved i mean look at the techno scene it's like this dj guy ah. that's supposed to be like yeah. some writer he's not really writing anything he's playing no. around with mixing stuff and it's not really music i no, mean it, it's not composing it's, it's not composing but it's not composing it you know yeah i mean look, look back at the real genuine composers like beethoven Mozart and so on. Of course. I mean, and then fast forward to the 1980s when we had all of the the, the real birth of, of heavy metal and thrash metal and all that. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of creativity going on even in the 80s. Yeah. And to see that happening now today with some of the newer bands, yeah, of despite course. all of the all of the you know the other distractions of like hip hop music and rap oh, stuff. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Yes, I mean, and I'm happy really that nice. they that all these guys don't get like um, influenced by this type of music. Thank God that there still are guys yes, that come and, out and play yes, music at all. You know, there is a, learn a, how to play. Yes, there is a German band. They are called Dust Bolt, and <laughs> they uh, they are really great guys because they play like really old trash metal. The old when I spoke with them, they said we inspired all trash metal like. Having the skateboarding in uh, the all the like, skateboarding, yes, Excellent. yes. You see that those guys, in, even in the picture, and you don't see like nowadays guys. Seems like the old footage. This is this is right. this is cool. Of course, it's like always inspiring, and not maybe bringing some new new you know some new sound. But I think that if, if guys or girls, of course, or, or everyone still do this means that uh, all the work that you got that musician like you Doug, did is not worth i mean worth something because you I mean, all of you inspired all these guys we did a tour with uh, a young bunch of young guys from uh luxembourg called fusion bomb fusion. and they're 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 hilarious and they totally are into 1980s thrash metal and yeah. when they got a chance to tour with us it was really a big deal for them they thought it was excellent and they're great guys and so we hang out with them and show them everything we know and help them out and give them tips and pieces and bits and it's yeah. uh it's it's really cool to see that there are a bunch of people that really are interested in what we started and we were just yeah. naive kids too you know I mean, you, you launch what, I mean, um, it's, um, 
I mean, a, a sound, you, you launch in the, I mean, a genre of music that is completely, because when you speak about thrash metal, of course, there is the German one. There is, of course, uh, we know, all know what creator, um, Sodom, uh, Destruction, but from the Bay Area, there is so many bands that there are not equal to the other. Because, for example, I was speaking about about you before, Danny. Mordred are different from Brand Illusion, right. from uh, Forbidden are different from Exorder. Each band yeah. have its own uh, personality. This is what this is what I think all the band get influenced by. Yeah. Yeah. So and um, there is uh, you said before uh, that there is this new band uh, that inspired you. But speaking in general, there is some music i mean um, maybe this could be a little bit tough some we can say we i always say just pick five albums that influenced you in your life but i just, I just said with, with no number there is some there are albums or musicians that really influence your way of playing guitar or or just composing in general oh sure uh i mean the way i play i, I pay attention to you know, intense rhythm players, like everybody from, you know, Eddie Van Halen to yeah, to uh, James Hetfield. You know, these guys are incredible rhythm players. You yeah. know, these guys, they have a, a solid rhythm. The, the way they think, the way their timing is excellent, yes. you know, and it's really, really important. Yes, of course. That. But as for melodies and solos and things like that, that's that's different too. I mean, then there's like you know you have the really fast players. You have the Gary Moore's. Gary, yeah. Gary Moore plays with a lot of soul. He's also really fast. You know, yes, you true. Have Walter yes, Giardino true. from Rada Blanca is a big fan. I'm a huge fan of him. He's awesome, and he uh, learns a lot. Learned a lot from uh, Richie Blackmore, who I also like, and uh, you know some. A little bit from Ingrid Malmsteen, Michael Schenker, Uli, Ingrid Malmsteen, you know, these, these guys, yes. they put feeling in, yeah. and melody into guitar solos that I just yeah. can't escape from. It's what it is. I mean, part of me. Yes. So and like, and what about? Melody. It's like rhythm and then melody. Yeah. Speed, you know? Yeah, yeah, that combine it together came as well. Exactly. It. That makes who you are. Yes, I understand completely. I and, can't say it any clearer than that. Yes, and and what about that? We can uh, don't speak about COVID. Just put it what, like in the corner. What about the future plans about Blind Illusion? Well, what we're doing right now is uh, we we uh, I've over the years I've bought so many microphones and so many. Uh, <laughs> computers and pro tools yeah. recording setups and this and that uh that you know i have a home studio at home and i record yeah. a lot of guitars and uh tom our bass player he's he started doing the same thing so yeah. we've been recording the new record ourselves at our own studio over at tom's That's house amazing. he took over the whole bottom part of his house and we recorded andy's drums all over there he's got there's a big room in there and we just got all the microphones we needed it was like 16 or whatever and uh, put it into our pro tools machines and started recording all the the basic tracks and we're recording nine songs right now for the wrath of the gods record which is the new record that we're working on right now we can wait i mean uh, i can wait to see this new record and maybe some live i hope soon <laughs> soon yeah we I, want hope to really, uh, really hope to. I really really hope because i want to see every band from i mean i but with you i i i think that i interview basically everyone from the trash yeah forbidden mordred oxorder violence blind illusion i don't know if there is another band maybe the tangel i missed that but with you i can say that i closed the the big family <laughs> hidden and I'd, I'd like to see like a festival with all of this band. It would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, we it would be. It's going to be really nice when things open up again and we can come yeah. to Italy and, and yeah. you know play we, in we, France, France. Yeah, and you know Vienna, you know in, yeah. in Austria. 
um, yeah. it's just basically everywhere in Europe play all yeah, the, sure. the festivals again. We've been yeah, there three true. times. It's really fun, but we yeah. haven't got to Italy yet. So it'd be there will be to time. Go. There will be time. So we are at the end. Before um, the general greetings to the fans, to the, our, our follower, there are two great special greetings. One goes to our friend in common, Daniel Danny White, because I mean, he told me he was my he he, he was he were my first uh, inspiration guitar guitarist. So, That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. And I that, mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's great to help people out, you know. I mean, I just, there's yeah, nothing that I like reason. more than making people happy and smiling, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, there's nothing like it. I mean, I don't know what would make me more happy than just to make other people happy. So if yeah. Danny was happy about that, good for him. I'll have to call him up and say, what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, a, he's an amazing guy. It's really always smiling. Got his and number he... right here. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, I will, we will call at the same time and make a phone drop. I'm, I'm going to text him right now. I'm going to text him and ask him, what did you say? <laughs> I could text him with as well on Facebook and say, Daniel, hi, you're, a, you're a indirect. <laughs> That's cool. Good for him. Yes, I'm here. Yes, he's right here. Ah, oh, he's, he's writing me. He's writing me right here. <laughs> Are you serious? Really, really. He's, he's texting me. I say I'm speaking with Doug. <laughs> yeah. And, well, Indira, and the second little Daniel answer and say, tell him I said hi. <laughs> uh, tell him I said hi. What's up? Ask him, why did you tell her about the Porsches? <laughs> <laughs> you can answer him. But, but. Uh, I'll talk to myself. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We, we were supposed to, we were supposed to play a show with them here in San Francisco this month. Really? But uh, it got canceled because of the virus. Ah, that's bad. I'd like to see. Yeah, I mean, but, we, uh, we could definitely play shows with Madrid. It'd be fun. Yeah, they are a cool band. They are a fun band also as well. So just at the, the, the last greetings for Blind Illusion fans, Doug Piercy fans, and our follower for Poison, Poison Rock. And we are done. So yeah, we're, we're, what question, we're just like how is it? Well, we just look forward to seeing you and I'd love to be able to meet all you in person and say what's up and yeah, so talk would about be an honor. guitars and music Porsche. and equipment. Porsches, Stratocasters, yeah. all the stuff and help you out. You know, I mean, it's everyone should be able to have success with all these things and yeah. I can help. And, you know, if I can answer some questions, it'd be excellent. Yeah, that's amazing. So thank you so much, Doug. I will, of course, I will advise you when the interview will be online and the event and everything. And thank you. And cool. I hope to see you. I met you, you and Daniel at the same time, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> nice. It will be nice, yes, as well. So thank you so much. Have a good day and hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank okay, you so much. So too. Thank it was you very honor. much too. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Trick City.